It's just Bruce, he don't bite. <laughs> Hello. Hey folks, welcome back to my channel. Today, as the title said, we're going to talk about things I hated growing up Gen X, or in the 80s specifically, because I grew up a lot in the 70s too. In the 70s, I was just a little kid. In the 80s, I was a teenager, and that's whenever I was getting to be sociable and had friends and we'd do things and, you know, uh, stuff like that. Now, this isn't the actual video I wanted to do tonight. This is uh, one I've had on hold that I wanted to do. It's a shorter one. I've been bus been so busy in my shop today, and I was working on this mold, and just I can't get it to come out right. And that was actually what the video was supposed to be, as a resin video, which I'm going to still do because maybe somebody can help me get it right. But anyway, that's why we're doing this video tonight. Now, the last video I did was an April Fool's joke um, with Junk Man. And uh, it, it's funny because uh, it got a lot of people, a lot of people laughed about it, which is my intention. I mean, it's satire humor. But what's funny is I got a lot of uh, insults and profanities and stuff in the comments, and I delete those all the time. It was about an eight-minute video, and uh, it was it was it was funny. I don't care what anybody says; it was funny. Junk Man loved it. But people would watch like the first two minutes of it, and uh, then they get pissed off, and they get on a little keyboard, and they didn't like it. You didn't watch the whole thing. It's an eight-minute video. If you can't sit there and watch the whole video, I don't think you have the right to sit there and make comments. That's all I'm saying. You know, watch the video end to end. I had the same problem with my uh, instructional videos that I do. People say, oh, you should do this or you should do that. Well, I did it in a video. You obviously skip through it. That's all I'm going to say about that. But I'm not even in an angry mood tonight. I'm in a good mood. Um, I did get my work done. That mold's still screwed up, but it's okay. I'll get it done tomorrow. Tonight, I want to talk about things I hated in the 80s, because normally I talk about Star Wars and things I loved growing up, Gen X. Uh, you know, Star Wars is like the main thing, cooking and food. The last Gen X video I did was about uh, food I liked in the 80s and how my parents would cook for us during the week. I got the thing that everybody does good stuff about growing up Gen X or in the 80s or, or even any anybody shouted. I want to talk about stuff I hated. So here we go. I got a few things here. No particular order. Um, it, it, like I said, no particular order. But things I hated in the 80s. Um, it's cool. We'll start with school. I was in my middle school and high school in, in the 80s. And uh, I hated gym shorts. Now, these are the 1980s gym shorts, the style we used to have to wear. Everybody wore them. I don't know why. They, um, they were very loose. They'd fall down half the time. I was a fat kid. So, you know, and they weren't very flattering at all, which is fine. You're at gym, you're exercising, you don't have to be flattering. But, you know, of course, everybody makes fun of you for it. But the worst thing about these gym shorts is, you remember boys, I don't know if girls had to do this or not. Boys had to climb the rope in gym class. And climbing the rope in gym class in these gym shorts was terrible. Because, A, your nuts would come out. There's no nice way to say it. Your nuts would pop out through the side. And it's happened to me. It happened to a few of the other people. I actually couldn't climb the rope because I was a, I was fat. I go a little bit up, but you know, you get your legs around there, circle, and then uh, yeah, boop, peekaboo. They're just not good. I mean, gym class as it was was a nightmare for me anyway because I was fat. I was out of shape. It just, I, I came into a good body later in life. I just didn't have it in middle school and high school. Just didn't have it. The next thing I could think of of what I hated during the 80s were these guys. The animatronics at Chuck E. Cheese's, or in this case was Major Magic's, I used to work there. I did a whole video about that a while back too. But to be honest with you, these guys, they terrified me. I had nightmares about them. They were just so, so creepy. That's all I had to say about that one. Now, I've never been a political person in my life. I mean, I follow politics. I pay attention. I learn. I learn what not to do. Uh, I don't really want to take one side or the other. I just try to stay out of it because that's what we did at Gen X. We stayed out of it. All we're worried about is, especially in the 80s, we're worried about going to make money for ourselves, make ourselves better. Back with everybody else, I didn't care what was going on in politics. didn't care about the president and any, anything going on. But the one thing that they did terrify us about in the 80s was the Cold War. For some reason, they felt it necessary to terrify us young adults with the Cold War and everything was going on with Russia and any second Russia could drop a nuke on us or, you know, then they put the movie movies like Red Dawn out, you know, scaring the hell out of us. And it's, it was a thing. I hated that. I, I got enough to worry about. I don't want to worry about nuclear weapons. And speaking of uh, Red Dawn, great movie. I'm not putting the movie down. I'm not saying I hate Red Dawn. I like Red Dawn. But just the whole fear tactic that they used 
you know, with the whole nuclear thing, oh, you know, it's a Cold War now, but, you know, all they have to do is push that button or, or we have to push the button. It's going to start World War Three. And it's all paranoid about it. It's almost like the government makes us paranoid on purpose. Hmm. Anyway, continuing, uh, let's talk about something. Well, okay, since we're talking about nuclear war, um, the worst thing in the 80s, and this isn't a joke at all, but and, and I still hate it, the fact that it exists to this day, AIDS, the disease, HIV, AIDS. I don't even know if I can mention that on YouTube because I've heard people had to bleep it out or whatever, but it's a fact of life. It happens. It happened, excuse me, in the 80s. It started in the 80s. Everybody was terrified of it because it was once again a disease we didn't understand. Um, didn't know where it came from. So many stories where it came from and everything. It just goes on and on and on and on and on. You know, they have people think, oh, you can get it from a toilet seat and so on and so forth. I'm not going to elaborate too much on it. If you were around for that time, you know it. It kind of repeated itself in 2020. But, you know, different name. I don't know. All right, enough serious stuff. I mean, this is all serious, but uh, getting back, like, and we were talking about gym shorts. Let's get back into, like, clothing from the 80s. Uh, shoulder pads. The women had the shoulder pads, like, way out to here. Here, I'll show you. There, I mean, this is kind of exaggerated, but yeah, for some reason, women wore the giant shoulder pads like they're going to go play linebacker for the Pittsburgh Steelers or something as soon as they're done working. I don't know. I guess it was, like, a power thing. I don't know. I just... I hate them. I just, I, I just always did. They look ridiculous, you know. And I noticed all the fashion in the '80s, which I hate, is all very pointy and angular. Even the hairstyles, just very pointy and angular. Never could understand that. Always hated it, just for my own reasons. And, and keep in mind, everything I'm saying that I hated in the '80s is only my opinion. It's this isn't a fact. This is just how I feel. So if, if you disagree with me or you can think of some other stuff from the 80s that you hated too, please leave me in the comments. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. I seriously would. All right, moving on. Oh, wow. Um, can't read my own writing. <laughs> okay, since we were talking about shoulder pads, I have to point out that the, the movie clothes, the clothes they wore in the movies, you're watching an 80s movie now, whether it's uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off or a anything. And we had good movies back then. I'm not saying we didn't have good movies. The clothes they wore, that's not what it looked like in the 80s. Most of us walked around wearing T-shirts and jeans. Uh, you know, a couple polo shirts here and there. You know, where they pop the collars. I always hate it when they pop the collars on those, those uh, on the polo shirts. It just made you look like a douche. But the movies would shove down your throat, oh, this is what the 80s looked like. And, and even during the 80s when the movies were actually coming out, people would try and go dress like their favorite movie character. It was just dumb, and I hated it. I mean, like I said, all through school, I wore t-shirts, jeans, a couple polos here and there. I wear a flannel shirt once in a while in the, in, in the winter. I dress very basic. And it, it, it's just, why dress like an idiot? You're, you're not a star. You don't have to spend all this money on what was the name back oh van Heusen was a big deal uh shirt it was a dress shirt it was uh sometimes well mine yeah, i did have one all blue and then just a perfectly white collar uh leather pants and stuff like that and they'd worn back in the 80s especially the girls they always tried to be like madonna or cindy lopper who i think is just like an alien version of madonna who came from another planet that's another thing i hate um a lot of hate today actually i'm, I'm not hating it just stuff i didn't like back then so, I mean, that's, you know, that, I think we touched it up on the clothes. You know what really pissed me off in the 80s, though? I'm not necessarily a car guy, but I do like uh, the Ford Mustang. Uh, my mom used to have a 69 Mustang. It was a beautiful car. And, uh, oh, let me get rid of this guy here. They came out with, in the 80s, this Mustang right here. Uh, it, 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 no, it's not a Mustang. It's, no. No, it didn't even have a decent engine in it. Oh, and of course, the white wall tires. I always hated the white wall tires on any 80s car, but back then they had to have the white wall tires. My dad had a, an 81 Chevy Impala, and he had to have the white walls. It was my job when he was cleaning to go to cleaning the car to go out and scrub the white walls with a Brillo pad. I hated them. It's just, why? You know, the 50s are over. The 50s had the big, wide, white walls on, like, the 57 Chevy Bel Air. Now, those look stylish. This just, no, no, don't like it. And there was a lot of cars in the 80s I just didn't like. They seemed to like do the boxy cars, like a, a Pontiac Bonneville or a Chevy Citation 
Um, the funniest one was the Chevy Chevette. That was like the most affordable car. It was the cheapest one. It's just as bad as a 1976 Chevy Vega. I mean, at least if you drove around in a Chevy Chevette, you could tell everybody you had a vet. But they were dumb, too. 80s tech. We didn't really have a lot of tech in the 80s. We had uh, Atari 2600. We had uh, Commodore 64 was coming out. It was like the tail end of the Commodore, uh, tail end of the Atari 2600. The Commodore 64 was popular in 1984. I know because I used to use one for my schoolwork. Um, and well, the Commodore 64 was okay. It had some uh, video games you could play. A lot of video games. But the problem was just finding them or getting your parents to buy them for you because you couldn't download games back then. Uh, and uh, oh, the, the brick cell phone you see it here in the picture here with uh, that's an Apple computer, by the way. <coughs> Excuse me. And oh, we played the Oregon Trail, and we get in trouble for playing that too. It just the tech sucked. It, but it's all we had. Uh, but I still hated it. I really hated it. I mean, if I had one of these now, I would sit down just to mess with it, and it would. Uh, compared to what y'all have now, wow. Okay, for those of you that don't know what this is, this is a portable tape recorder that we had back in the day. And uh, if we wanted to record a song from the radio, we had to put it up to the speaker and press record and play, which, you got, of course, you got poor quality music, you know, because it's using a little condenser microphone in there. But not only that, this is what I really hated about it. The DJ would not shut up. You'd hear your favorite song come on, come on the air, and you're sitting there trying to, trying to, uh, trying to record it, but the DJ won't shut up, and he's talking about something else the whole way through the first part of the song. You don't want to hear his mouth. You want the, you want the track. I actually got pissed off as like little teenage me, and called up the DJ at the radio, the radio station just to tell him off for talking over the tracks. Uh, yeah, I actually did that. I feel stupid about doing it now, but we all do stupid stuff when we're little. But yeah, that's what we had. And uh, if I'd have had the knowledge, uh, I could have made a cable to go from the headphones jack from the stereo into the microphone jack of the tape recorder and would have got a little bit better recording, but still would have had DJ Douchebag talking over it. Who cares about the weather? Play the song. Just saying. This, <laughs> this used to annoy the hell out of me too. The whole Just Say No campaign for drugs when we were teenagers... Honestly, when I was that age, uh, when this came out, I wasn't thinking about doing any drugs. I, n no, <laughs> we weren't thinking about it, but they, they shoved it. Oh, just say no, just say no. And I, I do realize drugs are not something to make fun of and addictions and stuff like that. But to, to the high schoolers and they're putting, oh, just say no, just say no. Kind of made me want to do it. And that's pretty much the first thing I did my first year of college. That would be in 87. So just saying, don't tell kids not to do something because they're going to do it. Now, I have to throw this in here because my parents had this couch, my grandparents had this couch, and I can still smell it if you know what I mean. If you grew up in the 80s, you know what this couch smells like along with all the rest of the furniture. It is just ugly. And I know they came out in the late 70s, but you have to realize when you get a new couch, you're going to keep it for at least 10 years. So we kept it all through the 80s. And because my dad used to smoke his pipe, his cigars, and his cigarettes, this couch smelled like that all the time. I mean, just even looking at this picture, I can smell it. T -t am, I, am I the only person who feels that way? Please, leave me a comment. Let me know. You know, so I'm editing this, and I'm realizing that I actually forgot two very important things that I have on my paper here. I must have skipped over them, because you know me. I talk really fast. Uh, the one I forgot to mention, TV remotes. We didn't really have them in the 80s. Um, they were there. They were available. Uh, our particular TV was one of the old giant console units. It was actually a huge piece of furniture. And uh, the t we didn't have a remote for it. It had the old clicker. You know, <laughs> and you had to find your channel on there. Uh, even when they had the cable boxes. Because that was the first cable we had was... Uh, uh, I don't remember what the company was. But uh, they gave you a cable box. And it was 36 channels. That's all we had. 36 channels. That's fine. At the time, that was a big deal. But the but the TV remote, there was none. Not even for the cable box. So me, as you know, little Brucey teenager, I was. It was my job to go up and turn the channel for my dad because he was lazier than I am now. I always hated that. 
always hated that. The second thing I also uh, wanted to throw in here was when we were growing up Gen X in the 70s and especially the 80s when I was a teenager, we were like 13, and but we were expected to act like 30-year-olds. Um, my dad was very strict, very heavy-handed, and um, I really didn't get to act like a kid very much. Uh, every time I did, I remember getting yelled at or got my ass kicked a few times. I mean, there, I'll just say it. I mean, that's just Gen X was raised as. You know, both parents are working. My mom didn't even have to work. She's out working somewhere. I come home from uh, school, expect to make my own dinner, which is fine because I like to cook. I've mentioned that before, and my mom wasn't a very good cook anyway. But every day I have to come home and do that, and then there would be a list of chores I had to do. Cut the grass, do some laundry, da 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 the whole nine yards every single day. Well, that's not really a way to grow up, I don't think. I mean, my, I raised my daughters by, my, by, by, the, by myself, and uh, we did do certain chores. But not every single day. I didn't rely on them to do everything. And I really hated that about my that part of my life. But um, I don't know. Maybe I'm just ranting right now because I thought about it and I got pissed off. Anyway, back to our regularly scheduled program. Now, in closing, I'm not saying I hated the 80s because I didn't. I loved growing up in the 80s. There's so much about the 80s that I loved. I mean, there's music, the, the, uh, the Star Wars toys at the beginning of the 80s until I stopped collecting them. But I restarted again later down the line, obviously. Um, uh, just, yeah, the music, the TV shows, the TV sitcoms. I used to love the sitcoms. Even though they were in reruns in the 80s, I would still sit there and watch Gilligan's Island, Brady Bunch, all kind of stuff like that. In fact, to this day, I'm a pretty good trivia master when it comes to 80s sitcoms. Uh, right up to the brand newer stuff that came up. I mean, we we had good stuff. We really we had a lot of good stuff. And a lot of times you forget about it. And that's why I like doing these kind of videos or watching other people do these kind of videos. Because it, it, it brings it back the memories of a better time and how we grew up. And anybody in, in any age group has their own childhood, which is different from what I had. You know, next generation was different. That's when the electronic age started coming in. So on and so forth and further back. Um, and it's, it's really cool just to think like our generation had what we had. You know, we were more outdoorsy. We'd go out, we'd build the ramps and jump with bikes. We'd go down to the creek and we'd pick up salamanders and catch crabs and, I don't know, beat the hell out of each other. We did that too and it wasn't no big deal. Uh, it's just how we grew up. And through the generations, it's all changed. Uh, everybody has their own childhood. And, and that's good too. You know, it is what it is. Um, I have some more I want to say. I was going to do the 70s uh, the next time I do one of these videos because I have some good and bad stuff about the 70s. Uh, mostly the clothing in the 70s. That really sucked. There's a preview. But speaking of clothing, my wife bought me a new shirt. And I don't know if you can see it all. Yep, this is pretty much my life right here. But, uh, yeah, got to show it off because I appreciate it. Anyway, I hope you all were doing okay, and uh, please leave a comment, like, uh, I see I have some new subscribers from the April 1st video, and you're welcome here. I do a lot of different things here. Uh, check through it. So if there's something you like, watch it. Give me some constructive criticism. I don't mind hearing constructive criticism, but if someone's going to be nasty, bye. Too old for uh, toxic stuff. I just want to have fun. That's why I'm here. So I'll catch you guys later, and uh, bye. It's just Bruce, he don't bite. <laughs> Hello.